Did something happen? Patricia took a deep breath before she nodded her head. Vice Supreme Leader, this is something big. Eric is dead. Silence descended in the room after Patricia passed the information. It was obvious that none of them could believe the information that they had received. Considering the capabilities that Eric possessed, it was obvious that he couldn't be easily killed, even if he fought against another person who had the same capabilities as him. The only level of person that could kill him would definitely be a person who was a single level and above ahead of him in terms of capabilities. But as long as they could think of it, they had not detected any person of that level leaving the stronghold. After all, the movement of the people in the stronghold wasn't something that was just monitored by the other organizations. Instead, this was something that involved a war. As long as those big guns of the organizations made moves, then they would be making several risks of the stronghold being taken down. Antonio Phillips, the current vice supreme leader of the Panthers organization, was fuming inside. He couldn't believe that a guardian of the Panthers organization had been killed off. It was not just a matter about Eric being part of his faction but being a member of the Panthers organization. Losing a guardian at such a moment was definitely no different from crippling them. Although the injury was not that big, it was still significant enough for the Panthers organization to suffer. Do you have any idea about who did that? Or could it be that he took the poisonous pill? Antonio asked in a chilling voice. Currently, he really wished that he could find the person who was behind this, and tear them into pieces. Patricia shook her head. Then she said, According to the information that I have received about his vitals, I have found out that he was engaged in a fight. That fight wasn't easy at all, as he was beaten up one-sidedly. After that, his vitality continuously dropped. Finally, it reached a moment that it seemed that he was undergoing immense pain. Then after a few minutes, his life was depleted as he was killed. Silence dominated the room once again. None of those present could actually understand what really happened. From the information that they had received, it was obvious that Eric had been beaten until he was killed. But then, the main question was, who was it that was involved in the matter? Antonio, on the other hand, was already fuming in anger. It was an agreement that, all those that were already above the five-star level, were not supposed to deal with those of the lower level belonging to other organizations. This was an agreement that was never supposed to be broken, unless another organization aimed at starting a war with the organization that they would have attacked. From the details of the report, it was obvious that Eric had encountered a person who was at a level far above him. As for the torture that he had undergone, it was obvious that the other party was trying to search for information from him. As for the one who did it, I am not sure about that. But, Eric managed to send us an audio of what occurred at that moment. Patricia continued. After she said that, she immediately began playing the audio that had recorded the conversation between Eric and Jack. Other than the conversation between Eric and Jack, there was another pre-recorded audio between him and Samantha. This was the conversation that had occurred during the time that they had met for the first time outside the stronghold. Since Eric had not managed to send the audio well, the arrangement of the audio wasn't right, so, it began by playing the most recent audios. Even though the audio that had been recorded between Jack and Eric was there, it wasn't a complete one. Instead, it was the final parts that had been captured. During this final moment, Eric had been giving the overview about the stronghold that he belonged to, and from this, they could deduce that the person who had killed him was definitely not from their stronghold. But when they got to hear the conversation between him and Samantha, they couldn't help but have a shift in their thoughts. Hee hee, it appears that there is an enemy who is trying to direct us to another place. I never expected that they would be the ones who were going to make a move on us, Antonio laughed coldly. The anger within his eyes began increasing. Currently, his battle intent immediately began soaring in the air. A lot of pressure suddenly appeared out of nowhere, making all those that were present in the same room as him begin sweating. They all knew about this situation. This was a time that Antonio was fully angered. For that reason, it was obvious that there was someone who was going to pay for that. I think you should take a look at. After taking a moment to calm down, Antonio finally managed to rein in his anger. After that, he looked around without saying a word as he began deliberating on what to do. As for the other guardians that were present alongside Patricia, they too looked at each other. Some guardians couldn't help but begin speaking. It seems that the Butterfly Organization is not as gentle as we expected. They actually launched an attack on our members without us expecting. I'm quite certain that they never expected that Eric actually recorded their conversation. The man with long red hair spoke. This is something that cannot be taken lightly. 
we will have to counter as soon as possible to show them that we are not weaklings that they can simply mess with. The lady spoke. Just like Antonio, anger was blazing in her eyes. The relationship between the five of them who belonged in the same faction was good. For that reason, having one of them getting killed was definitely something that they didn't take lightly. Not to mention that it was going to decrease the strength of their faction, there was also a fact that they at least cared about each other. Silence. I don't want you to discuss this matter with others. Let this matter remain a secret of the top echelons of the organization. Since this is something big, it is obvious that we cannot hide it from the others, as they should have already known about it, Antonio said. After taking a deep breath, he finally continued, even though it will be something that will hinder my plans, there's nothing else that I can do about it. I will have to inform the supreme leader so that we can act on the butterfly organization's move. Although I cannot recognize the voice that was speaking to Eric, it is not difficult for someone to change his voice. Hey, they thought that by changing a voice into that of a male was going to work on us. How laughable, Antonio snorted. The butterfly organization was the only organization that was present in the stronghold that was only for females. Even though they were ladies, they were actually the second strongest organization. The ladies of the organization were strong and could not be underestimated. When facing the vice supreme leader of the butterfly organization, Antonio wasn't sure that he could be advantageous. And apart from them, there were other organizations present in the stronghold. All of these were waiting for chances that they could take advantage of to leap to the top. And even though it was true that the Panthers organization was the biggest organization present in the stronghold, it actually wasn't ahead of the other organizations by a big margin. The range at which they were ahead of the other organizations was almost negligible and a loss like the one that they had encountered was enough for the gap that they had created to be closed. Even though it was true that the Twelfth Guardians were not the strongest of the organization, during a war, they were important. They acted as the generals, and led all those that were below them to battle. In most cases, it was these twelve that always acted. As for those who were a level above them, they only took action if they faced an enemy who was beyond the level of the Guardians to handle. With the Twelve Guardians, the Panthers organization held an advantage, after all, the Butterfly Organization, that was just second to them, coincidentally had 11 Guardians as well. But now that the Panthers Organization had lost the only advantage that they had, it was obvious that in a fight, they would no longer be able to dominate easily. But still, that didn't matter to Antonio. At this moment, he was actually thinking about if it was possible, to find another way so that they could utilize what they found about five years ago. If it were possible, then it wouldn't be a problem for them to actually dominate the whole stronghold. If they managed to do that, then the resources that they were going to get would definitely make them even stronger. However, currently, the main difficulty that Antonio was facing was that, Eric went out on his orders, since that was the case, then he would be blamed by the supreme leader for his death. Even though it was true that the supreme leader wanted to find a method that could be utilized to use what they found, it wasn't at a cost of losing some of the strongest members of the organization. Another thing yet, there was a fact that, he would have to reveal what it was that he was looking for. So, to deal with this, Antonio had decided to go and look for the supreme leader, rather than waiting for him to be called. He wanted to ensure that he met with the supreme leader in private, to try to preserve the secret. Every one of you, better get ready, we might have to fight at any moment now. Antonio stated before raising from the throne that he was on. Subsequently, he walked out of the room, heading towards the living quarters of the Supreme Leader. The sun had already set, and the night had already begun setting in. The weather was cool, quite comfortable for people to walk around. The wind blew, as the streets were busy with pedestrians moving around. The jam was light, obvious that not many people had gone to work on that day. After all, it was on a weekend. Even though trees were not many in the city, the wind still managed to blow some leaves to the center of the city. All these leaves were either red, orange, or yellow. Autumn had already set in for a good while now. In the city, a majestic-looking building stood. It was painted blue, red, white, and black. It was a mixture of several colors, but the combination of the colors made it look beautiful. On the walls of this building, there was an image of an eagle that was soaring in the air. It was obvious that the owner of the building had hired the best artist possible, who was able to make the eagle look very realistic. This building was where the Soaring Eagle Hotel, the former biggest competitor of the Glaze Hotel, was located, around this area, there wasn't even a single hotel that was located here. After all, how could the small hotels compete with such a big one? Presently, the lights of the whole building had been lit. 
The way that they illuminated the surroundings made it look ethereal. The decorations of the hotel had been improved, and they looked even more beautiful than they ever had during the normal days. Presently, inside the entire hotel building, there were no longer the customers who always flooded the building. Even though the business had been somehow poor as of late, the number of customers was always enough to at least half fill the hotel. On the topmost floor of the building, there was a big room, one that looked like a ballroom. Inside it, even though there were not many people present, the entire room was lively. An event was happening here. This was an event filled with joy, excitement, and a touch of anticipation. The room had already been transformed into a beautiful and elegant venue, turning it into a mesmerizing celebration space. The air buzzed with delight, as the people present in the room all cheered. They chatted with one another as they laughed from time to time. All of them were quite familiar with each other, and they had decided to get even more familiar. They had all gathered here to commemorate a special occasion. Even though they didn't know anything else, they, of course, knew that this was a birthday party. The seats were arranged in a circular shape, and seated among the rows of seats were William, George, and the others from Encoed City. Hey guys, how comes the birthday parties are happening one after the other? William Farrow asked Benjamin, who was seated beside him. What now? You want to disagree about the dates of birth of two people? Benjamin asked as he looked at William with a strange gaze. Tisk. William could only click his tongue as he said, I forgot that you are a muscle brain. Why don't you be like Ismael, who although is also muscular, at least his brain is not filled with muscles. Hey, what the heck did you just say? Are you trying to imply that I am an idiot? Benjamin was, of course, displeased by William's words. Hey you two, knock it off. You should know that the focus of the event is about to arrive. Anderson stated from the side. When they heard that, both William and Benjamin stopped arguing, instead, they began gazing towards the door, expecting to see the person of the event. Guys, can you believe it? I can remember this as if it were just yesterday. That time, we were always trying to match make Jack and Celine. At that time, Jack always wanted to beat us up whenever we talked about that. At this moment, Kelly stated with a smile on her face. When the others heard that, they couldn't help but reminisce about the banquet that had been held in Encoed City. That was just the time that they were beginning to get to know Jack. Until this moment, they had never expected that Jack was such a big shot. Although they had gotten the information about the fact that the Alfonso family had been destroyed, they didn't think much about it. After all, Jack's relationship with the Alfonso family wasn't good in the least. At that time, they could remember that they could only think about Celine from a distance. But, she was now actually willing to invite them to attend Jack's birthday. And this time, Jack had also invited them. This had made them feel sweet inside. At the same time, they were feeling proud of themselves about the decisions that they had made during the time that they first met Jack. With the support of a person like Jack, they were sure that they were not going to get into trouble easily. So, they were willing to hug his thighs tightly. He he he. During that day, I said it. The two of them are a good match. William stated proudly. I think you should take a look at. For those who cannot remember this conversation, here is a recap. She's a beauty. He, right on time. She surely must be Jack's woman. Hey, Jack, we'll have your back as you get that lady. William smiled brightly as he said jokingly. What are you so proud of? Don't tell me that you didn't even know that you were joking at that time. If you were told to go and look for Celine at that time, you surely would have PSSED yourself. Kelly snorted from the side. Hey, how can you say that? It is not like I have ever PSSED myself, even if I faced a lion, William exclaimed. What lion are you talking about? You are even afraid of dogs. How can you talk about lions? Benjamin took this turn to make fun of William, as a comeback of what William had said about him previously. All right, all of you. Better stop making noise because it is almost time, Ismail said as he drank the red wine that was in his glass. Immediately after his words fell, the door was opened and two figures stepped in. In front was Celine, who was dressed in a stunning ensemble that accentuated her natural beauty. She exuded an aura of elegance and allure that made heads turn and hearts skip a beat. Her choice of attire for the evening was a figure-hugging, floor-length gown that showcased her enviable silhouette. Crafted with luxurious fabric that shimmered under the party lights, the dress highlighted her curves with tasteful precision, leaving a tantalizing hint of mystery. The green gown's rich, deep hue perfectly complemented Celine's radiant complexion, making her the epitome of sophistication. Adorned with intricate embellishments, the gown featured delicate beadwork and sequins, 
each carefully placed to catch the light in just the right way. Holding her hand was Jack, who was well dressed for the occasion. He had already thrown aside the casual clothing that he always put on. Instead, this time, he was dressed in a pristine white suit that exuded sophistication and confidence. He effortlessly stood out from the crowd. The tailored fit of the suit accentuated his strong build, perfectly hugging his masculine physique without being overly ostentatious. The jacket of his suit boasted clean, sharp lines, while the crisp white fabric shimmered subtly under the ambient lighting, adding an understated touch of elegance. Completing the look, Jack wore a matching pair of white trousers that fell impeccably, tapering towards his well-polished white shoes. The monochromatic palette added to the overall impact, creating an aura of timeless style. As his silver hair glistened under the glow of the room, it became evident that this distinctive feature was another element that set Jack apart. The sleek strands were expertly styled, perfectly combed back with a subtle sheen that showcased their refined charm. The silvery hue added a touch of distinctiveness, enhancing his overall appeal and lending an air of sophistication. In his white suit and shoes, accentuated by his captivating silver hair, Jack emanated a sense of refined masculinity. With every step, his confidence and magnetism awed onlookers, leaving them speechless. The contrast of his white ensemble and unique silver hair became a captivating visual representation of his charisma and individuality. Jack's appearance was not merely about fashion, it was a reflection of his carefully curated persona. Each element came together seamlessly, affirming his impeccable taste and the effortless way in which he carried himself. His white suit and silver hair served as an exquisite canvas for his distinguished presence, captivating all who encountered him. As the duo walked into the room, all the eyes of the men present, focused on Celine as she moved gracefully through the crowd, the luminescent patterns dancing and twinkling lending an air of enchantment to her presence. Celine's black hair, meticulously styled, cascaded in perfect waves, framing her face with effortless allure. Each strand seemingly fell into place as if guided by the hands of a master artist. Paired with her soft, natural makeup, her features were enhanced subtly, ensuring that her stunning beauty remained the center of attention. Whispers of admiration filled the air, each observer struck by her timeless charm and undeniable allure. Had it not been for the fact that Jack was present as well, then the ladies would have also been staring at Celine. The two smiled at the guests that had arrived. They exchanged greetings, before they finally took their seats. Since the focus of the event was already present, then the event finally began. The venue sparkled with radiant lights, casting a warm and inviting glow over every corner. Beautifully decorated tables were abundantly adorned with Celine's favorite flowers delicately arranged in stunning centerpieces that filled the room with their fragrance. Celine couldn't help but gasp when she saw this. She had never expected that Jack was going to put great effort for her birthday party. For that reason, she couldn't help but look at him with shining eyes. With a smile on her face, she looked around, just to make sure that she had painted the scene in her mind. She wanted to remember about this for the rest of her life, as this just resembled how special this day was to her. A scrumptious array of mouth-watering delicacies was meticulously prepared, presenting a feast fit for the grandest of celebrations. After small talks, it was finally time for people present to start wishing the birthday girl a happy birthday. As always, they all began singing happily. None of them present hated the host of the event. Then at that moment, after they had finished singing the happy birthday song, the door to the room was opened. The chefs pushed in a cart that was carrying a cake. All the eyes of all people present widened in surprise. They looked at the birthday cake that had appeared in front of them. It was no different from a masterpiece work. The birthday cake was in a form of a lady, wearing a battle armor, holding a sword, pointing it to the sky. Even though it was just a cake, the people present couldn't help but think that this was actually a person. Had it not been for the fact that the colors of the sculpture was not like that of a human, but cream, they would have thought that it was a person who was standing there. This should actually be the king of all cakes present in the world. What do you mean by a king? This is obviously a queen, don't you see the lady there? Just the heroic spirit is enough to make me fall in love. Get lost, will you? You want to fall in love when the cake was not prepared for you? He he he, I was just joking, who prepared such a cake? What a masterpiece. After the party is over, I will definitely go and look for the person who prepared this cake. I want it for my next event. Celine's breathing staggered. She looked at the figure that had been created from the cake, and immediately, she could tell that it was herself. 
The happiness in her heart increased by several folds. Currently, she had completely fallen in love. She could be considered an idiot in love. But, she undoubtedly didn't mind if the target of her love was Jack. Jack, on the other hand, was calm. He was quite satisfied when he saw that Celine's expression was vibrant. He had after all put in significant effort to prepare all of these. After the candles that had been lit around Celine's sculpture were blown off by the birthday girl, she began cutting the cake. But because of her love for the sculpture, she simply cut the side cakes. She was intending to preserve this birthday cake, even though she knew that it was impossible. After taking the first piece, she turned around and faced Jack. With a smile on her face, she extended the fork and fed him the cake. Thereafter, Jack repeated the same thing. Celine then went ahead and began feeding her parents and friends. After that, she fed a few more people who were close to her and Jack. As for the rest, they were asked to pick the pieces of cake from the plates that were distributed by Celine herself. With that finally out of the way, it was time for them to deal with the dishes. They had already been eyeing these dishes for a long while now. Had it not been for the fact that their attention was caught by Jack and Celine's appearance, as well as the masterpiece of a cake, they would have continued swallowing their saliva as they observed the food. None of them cared about what others thought about them, as they indulged themselves in a sumptuous buffet, savoring the delectable culinary delights that Jack had personally selected. He had come over the day before, and had utilized his professional chef skills to prepare the food, of course, he didn't prepare it alone. Instead, he did this with the assistance of the hotel's chefs. Had the other people known about the fact that these chefs, who were always proud of themselves, were actually willing to work as assistants, their jaws would definitely hit the floor. All the same, the chefs were both willing to do that. After all, they had never seen a person who was so skilled when it came to cooking. So, they decided to take that time as a learning experience. Of course, Jack's real intention for doing that was that he was planning to make sure that the hotel went bankrupt. For that reason, he was going to start by stealing the chefs. From savory appetizers to delectable entrees and exquisite desserts, every morsel was a testament to Jack's love for Celine. He had made sure to select several dishes that she loved. As the night progressed, laughter and vibrant conversations filled the air, creating an atmosphere of happiness and love. After that was, sharing stories and memories, while the joyful ambiance served as a testament to the enduring bonds between loved ones. After they had all eaten to their content, it was finally time for them to give gifts. One by one, they began offering the gifts that they had prepared beforehand. Celine, whose night had already been made, received all of them with a bright smile on her face. This time, she was cheerful, in that, those that had always taken her for an ice queen couldn't help but be entranced. At the same time, they couldn't help but wonder if the lady in front of them was actually the ice queen that they were used to, or a replacement. After all, they were not used to this side of Celine. But Wendy and Angie looked on with a hint of jealousy. But all the same, they were extremely pleased that their sister's boyfriend was so good to her. Since they had grown up together, all that they wished for was for their sister to be happy. And seeing that Celine was so happy at the moment, they got satisfied in their hearts. Jonathan, of course, saw this. He couldn't help but look at Jack with a hint of resentment in his eyes. What the heck? I just hope that my girlfriend doesn't confuse me for Jack. And, she should neither try comparing the two of us. Jonathan thought to himself as he looked at Wendy, who was beside him. The relationship between the two of them was progressing all too well. Even though there was a period of confusion, where even when she got herself engaged to Jack, that was just a prelude to their love. I think you should take a look at. The two of them loved each other deeply. For that reason, they had always spent their time together, trying to make up for the time that they had been away from each other. At this moment, Jack finally took out a small necklace box that was placed inside his coat's inner pocket. When she saw that, Celine's eyes lit up with expectation. But at the same time, she couldn't help but feel a hint of disappointment, as she was expecting something else. As Jack opened the necklace box, he took out a necklace. The appearance of the necklace immediately made all the people attending the party to gasp in surprise. The necklace was a striking testament to love, a delicate adornment that held profound meaning. Suspended from a dainty chain, a pendant dangled gracefully as it was held in Jack's hand, catching the light and illuminating the surrounding air. The centerpiece of the necklace was a ruby-colored, heart-shaped pendant, meticulously crafted with intricate details that exuded an air of elegance. The smooth, polished surface reflected a gentle glow, reminiscent of the warmth and tenderness associated with love. 
the contours of the heart were flawlessly curved, suggesting a sense of gentility and compassion. Adding to its allure, the pendant was embellished with shimmering gemstones, delicately hugging the edges of the heart-shaped outline. Each stone, carefully chosen for its brilliance, captured the essence of love in its own unique way. The appearance of the necklace couldn't help but make Celine feel her heartbeat beginning to race. She stared at it, making sure that she had seen all the details of the necklace. Perhaps it was the mesmerizing sparkle of diamonds, symbolizing eternal commitment, or the vibrant hues of amethyst, representing deep affection and tranquility. Whatever the stones may be, their harmonious arrangement enhanced the charm and sentimentality of the necklace. Nestled within the heart-shaped pendant was a single, meticulously etched word, love. The engraving, finely etched into the surface, served as a constant reminder of the powerful emotion it represented. The word radiated positivity, reminding Celine of the joy, warmth, and connection that love brings to her life. It was a simple yet profound symbol that captured the very essence of her experiences and aspirations. This is a token of my love to you. Please, accept it. Jack looked at Celine as he said these words. There was sincerity in his voice as his book these love-filled words. Celine smiled even more brightly as she turned around to allow Jack to put the necklace around her neck. Using her hand, she pulled away the hair, exposing her fair neck. Jack took a step forward and undid the clasp before he went ahead and placed the necklace around her neck. As Celine wore this necklace, it became more than just an accessory. It transformed into a cherished keepsake, a tangible expression of her deepest emotions and values. This time, she had already forgotten about the sculpture that was made from the cake and instead, focused on the necklace. If she ever had a doubt before, then all doubts had been cleared on this day. Her love for Jack had reached a new level. As she turned around to show how the necklace looked on her to Jack, suddenly, the entire place fell silent. Confused, Celine could only hurriedly turn around to face Jack. What she saw made her close her mouth in both surprise and excitement. At this moment, Jack was down on his knees, and in his hands, there was a velvet ring box. Inside it, there was a simple yet complex ring. Suddenly, William ran over from somewhere, with a microphone in his hand. Without any delay, he placed it before Jack's mouth. Jack could only shake his head at that. But still, he appreciated the gesture. He looked directly into Celine's eyes and stated, Celine, the two of us grew up together, before we parted ways. But as fate could have it, we met once again. Love had already been born between the two of us. Even though some things that cannot be explained happened, the love between the two of us still existed. I have loved you all this while, and I will continue loving you. To prove that I am serious about the relationship between the two of us, I have come forward with a decision. Celine, will you marry me? Jack stated all these words one after the other, at a slow pace. A gasp escaped from Celine's lips as she looked at the man of her dreams, holding a small box in his hand containing a shimmering engagement ring. A commotion suddenly erupted in the room. Those who had attended didn't even wait for Celine to reply. Instead, they began shouting. Yes, 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 yes. How could Celine resist this? And just as she was about to reply, she suddenly saw a microphone appearing in front of her. This microphone was being held by Wendy. Wendy smiled at her as she gave her a nod. Yes, I will marry you, Jack, Celine replied. Jack smiled as he immediately slid the ring into her ring finger. And thereafter, he got to his feet and hugged her. The Soaring Eagle Hotel became a place of jubilation, as cheers, laughter, and tears of joy filled the air. In this beautifully orchestrated celebration of love, Celine's birthday party transformed into an unforgettable moment that would forever be etched in their hearts. Surrounded by their cherished loved ones, Jack and Celine embraced their future together as their journey of love and companionship officially began. After the party in the evening, everyone left the hotel and went back to their respective lodging places. Everyone was in a joyous mood as they departed from the Soaring Eagle Hotel. Of course, the most excited one was definitely Caitlin. After all, what she had always been expecting had suddenly happened. This was something that she had always dreamed about. The strong bond that she shared with Anne had always made her want Celine and Jack to be married so that the bond could be strengthened further. So, as she went back home with her husband, she was all smiles. On the other hand, Jonathan had also decided to make arrangements. He had to take over the position of the family head as soon as possible. Even though it was true that he was still young, that was to be expected considering that they were the third generation. 
If it could be taken that the ones who were currently leading the family were the first generation, the second generation was prohibited from taking over. So, the third generation, which he belonged to, would have to take over as soon as possible. After all, the first generation was already so old, it was time for them to retire. He was sure that with the support that he got from Jack, it would not be anything difficult for him to take over the position. With Nathan out of the way, the biggest competition that he had been receiving from the family had been eliminated. Arthur had initially not wanted the position. So, with the one who had intended to make him the family head gone, he was of course happy to be free once again. Although he was going to follow many restrictions, at least, they were not compared to the level that they previously were when he had to compete for the position of the family head. Jonathan had already seen it. It seemed that Jack was operating his business at a loss, but surprisingly, none of his businesses ever failed. Since he possessed 10% shares of Calmond Entertainment Company, once it merges with the Rose Entertainment Company, his shares will be reduced to 5%. But even so, he didn't feel the least disappointed, instead, he was happy. He knew about Jack's plan to dominate the entertainment industry. For that reason, even if he was given only 1% of the shares, he was willing to take. After all, not everyone could get the opportunity to be involved in such a big company. As for Jack and Celine, the two of them had rushed off to spend the night at a certain night park. They wanted to enjoy their leisure time together. Celine's birthday was on the 12th of September 2026. With the celebrations finally out of the way, the following day, Jack finally began his plans. As the security company was already continuing to dominate the industry, he wanted to deal with the hotels personally. His heart already had a sense of urgency, as he was planning to go to the strongholds within a period of one year. Otherwise, wouldn't it be a loss to not utilize the manpower that he possessed fully? Since he was already at odds with the Soaring Eagle Hotel, then he might as well start taking care of it. It was not just a matter of making it go bankrupt, but he was also planning to acquire it, of course, that was only after it was bankrupt. The first target that was in his mind was the one that was located in the capital city. This was the biggest hotel among all the Soaring Eagle hotels present in the country. This hotel had also been trying to open several branches within the capital city, to try to compete with the Glaze Hotel. After all, with the methods that the Glaze Hotel was using, it was obvious that they were trying to take the hotels to where the customers were. In this way, they were preventing the customers who usually traveled for some distance before they could dine in the hotel that was located in a far distant place from going over. Getting professional chefs was not a problem, but getting master professional chefs was a concern. For that reason, Jack had decided to start by poaching the best chefs present in the Soaring Eagle Hotel. He had already interacted with the chefs during the preparations for the birthday party. Even though he had not expressed his willingness to take them into his hotel, he was sure that these chefs who were fanatic at cooking would definitely be tempted. Jack walked down the familiar corridors, as he headed towards the kitchen. Nobody prevented him from going there even though it was a staff-only area. Many of the staff members were quite familiar with him. After all, he had been here two days previously, and he was the one who had hosted a banquet the previous day as well. So, they had a good impression of him. After he got into the kitchen, he met with the chefs. Just like always, they were busy as it was a normal working day for them, even though it was on a weekend. When they saw him, their eyes glittered with excitement. They approached him as they asked enthusiastically. Mr. Jack, are you here to cook? That's right. If you want to cook, we can prepare everything for you. Do you perhaps have any other dishes that will need to be prepared? I'm willing to learn. These four master chefs began acting like nursery kids. Jack could only shake his head at how enthusiastic these people were at cooking. But all the same, this was to be expected as for them to get to the level that they were in. It was not just a matter of learning, but dedication. I think you should take a look at. Guys, I came here today with a proposition. I don't know whether you will agree to it or not, Jack stated. The chefs finally calmed down, as they waited for Jack to say what it was that he wanted to inform them of. When he saw that they were all paying attention, Jack nodded in satisfaction. It seemed that all the hard work that he had put in the past two days was not in vain. His goal was to assemble a team of exceptional culinary experts under his leadership. For him to be able to dominate the hotel industry, it was definitely not just a matter of having money. Instead, this was something that concerned the recipes, as well as the professionals that worked under him. That was the reason as to why he began by poaching the chefs here. Here's how Jack strategized to achieve his goal. 1. Showcasing his abilities. Jack began by making a name for himself within the hotel. 
With all the skills that he had shown when he was preparing several sumptuous dishes, he had already made a name for himself as a master chef. 2. Establishing relationships. Jack understood the importance of building relationships and networking to achieve his goals. For that reason, he had offered various pointers to the chefs about the mistakes that they were making when preparing different dishes. This had made them appreciate him, and they were always welcoming to him. After all, at their level, it was difficult to get a teacher. So, they were willing to do a lot to learn from him. 3. Promoting his vision. With a clear vision in mind, Jack actively promoted his philosophy and approach to cooking. He focused on techniques, creativity, and delivering outstanding culinary experiences. He wanted all the chefs who worked for him to be the best, so, he had already begun training them in the best ways of a chef. 4. Headhunting top talent. Jack was going to do that just now. He looked at the chefs who expressed a desire for growth, creativity, and new challenges. So, he went ahead and began talking to them about joining his hotel. Of course, these chefs were all surprised when they heard that Jack actually owned the Glaze Hotel. They couldn't help but wonder what was the reason as to why Jack had come over to the Soaring Eagle Hotel, rather than using his hotel. Of course, even if Jack went ahead and explained, they wouldn't understand. So, he simply gave an excuse about that and continued emphasizing the benefits of joining his team, such as artistic freedom, opportunities for professional development, and a supportive work environment. Jack didn't have to say a lot, since he owned the Glaze Hotel, and his chef skills were already top-notch. Most of the chefs present were willing. But, there was only a single problem, they were bound by a contract. You don't have to care about that. You just have to tell me that you are willing to join the Glaze Hotel. As for the matter of the contract, you can leave that to me, Jack replied nonchalantly. It didn't matter what amount of compensation he had to pay, but all of that was not a problem to him. After all, his balance had already gone close to $500 billion. With such a hefty amount, as long as he could accelerate the process of dominating the hotel industry, it was all worth it even if he spent $100 billion to do that. When the chefs heard that, their eyes lit up, since they had gotten a chance to learn from the best, then what the heck were they continuing to do here? So, all of them without hesitation went towards the locker room to change out of the chef outfit. They were actually abandoning the work that they were doing at that moment, they would rather not stay here any longer. But of course, this only applied to the head chefs. As for the chefs who were at a lower level, they were, of course, not easily convinced. Unlike the head chefs, there were most of them who had become chefs simply because it was the only profession that they could pursue. Of course, Jack didn't care about them. Whether they followed him or not, it was their choice. The main reason as to why he had come over was to simply get those that were at the top of the kitchen. In no time, information that almost made the top management of the hotel vomit blood arrived. All the head chefs of the hotel wanted to quit their job, and from the side information, it was said that they had been poached. Inside an office on the topmost floor of the building where the Soaring Eagle Hotel was located, there was a luxurious office characterized by its elegant and sophisticated design, creating a space that exuded opulence and refinement. Upon entering the office, one would immediately be struck by the grandeur of the surroundings. The walls were adorned with rich, dark wood paneling, meticulously crafted with intricate details that added depth and texture. The flooring was crafted from high-quality marble, smooth and shiny, with plush rugs strategically placed to add warmth and comfort. As natural light poured in through large, arched windows, drapes made from sumptuous silk gently swayed, allowing a soft glow to envelop the room. Ornate chandeliers made of crystal hang from the ceiling, casting a gentle, ethereal light that illuminates every corner of the office. A mahogany desk, impeccably polished and exuding sophistication, sat at the center of the space. Its smooth surface showcased minimalist yet striking gold accents. The desk was adorned with high-end stationery, a beautifully crafted pen set, and a crystal paperweight, adding to the feeling of luxury. Surrounding the desk were plush, leather armchairs designed for supreme comfort. Seated behind the desk was a man who was having well-trimmed beard, his gray eyes sharp. Each of his movements indicated a graceful demeanor. He was John, the owner of Soaring Eagle Hotel. Presently, his brows were furrowed deeply as he stared at the report that he was reading on the screen of his computer. There was a hint of fury in his eyes as he continuously read the report. After some time, it seemed that he could not hold on anymore. So, he took the telephone that was on his desk and contacted his secretary. Get the one in charge of human resources to come here right now. 
After saying those words, he didn't wait for a response from the other end and immediately hung up. After placing the down the handset, he used his thumb to rub his chin, contemplating on something. About five minutes later, there was a knock on the door, come in, he said without turning his head towards the door. The door opened and a man who was in his late forties came in, from his expression, one could easily tell that he was anxious. Can you personally explain to me what is happening, John stated, without looking at the man who had entered. E.H., just this morning, all the master chefs of our hotel presented their resignation letters. They said that they wanted to leave the hotel, and join another one. The man replied carefully. He knew that this information was definitely going to make things difficult for him. Since he was the one who was responsible for the human resources, then it was obvious that all the employees were under his management. Since all the top chefs had decided to resign, then it was up to him to know the reason behind their resignation. But this time, there was nothing that he could do about it. After all, all those who had come over to resign were considered masters in their field. Even though he was the one in charge of human resources, he had to be polite with them. When he got their letters of resignation, he had tried to know the reason they wanted to resign. And the reason that he got was that, they had gotten another opportunity somewhere. Since that was the case, he tried offering more lucrative offers to them, according to what the company could manage. But all of this ended up with them refusing resolutely. And when he came to know where they were heading to, he was left speechless. After all, even though it was true that the hotel that they were heading to was currently the leading hotel present in the country, but who said that they could get better opportunities there. Where are they joining? John asked. At this moment, a cruel hint flashed in his eyes, only for a moment before he managed to restrain it. But even so, the man who was in charge of human resources suddenly felt his blood going cold. He couldn't understand it, but he knew that he was definitely going to suffer if he didn't find a way to bring back the chefs. They joined Glaze Hotel. The man replied. A long silence prevailed in the office. John didn't say any word, as he began thinking. Currently, he was wondering if this was just a coincidence, or it was a plan by the Glaze Hotel. I think you should take a look at. Previously, he had actually used numerous connections to get in touch with armed people. He didn't know of their origin, but he knew that they wanted somewhere where they could get hostages. For that reason, he decided to cooperate with them, and allow them to deal with his main opponent, the Glaze Hotel. He was sure that as long as an attack was launched on the Glaze Hotel, then the reputation of that hotel was going to go down. This in turn was going to give him a chance to rise to the top, but still, his plans didn't go through. Instead of going down, the Glaze Hotel had suddenly become even more aggressive, as they spent a lot of money just to increase their influence. It was not just a matter of expansion, but also a matter of advertisements and so on. They were using the topmost entertainment companies that had risen recently. John had, of course, tried to look for other ways to hinder them, but he never managed to do so. He had gone over to meet with the owner of the Rose Entertainment Company, but he found out that he could not meet him. He tried talking to the CEO about it, trying to look for ways that they could stop advertising for the Glaze Hotel, but all his efforts went into drain. The same thing happened at Calmond Entertainment Company. He got the same reply from them as he had gotten from the Rose Entertainment Company. Even though he was angry at that, there was nothing that he could do about it, after all, he didn't even know about whom the real owners of the two companies were. Since he couldn't deal with the matter of advertisements, then he had to find other ways to deal with it. But, all this while, he had never found any method that could be used to restrict the actions of the Glaze Hotel. As for how the attack on the Glaze Hotel was resolved, that was something that he didn't know about, and neither did he care about it. After all, he had made sure to make arrangements so that even if information was leaked, the way that those people got into the city with weapons could not be linked to him. But, as this was already giving him a headache, he suddenly received a report about the master chefs of the hotel quitting their job. And, they were going to the hotel that he was actually trying to look for means of making it fall. Could this be the strategy that the Glaze Hotel has decided to use on me? Poaching my staff members? Huh? John taught to himself. He already began thinking about countermeasures that were going to be taken to ensure that his hotel didn't go down. Have you tried looking for other master chefs? John raised his head as he looked at the manager in charge of human resource. The manager hesitated for a moment, before finally replying. Yes. I have tried all I can, offering all the benefits that can be offered by the hotel, but none of them agreed to come over. All of them had the same response, they had gotten an opportunity somewhere, and they were heading there. John frowned when he had that. He had never expected that the Glaze Hotel was going to take such a drastic move. 
After all, what they were doing was definitely no different from going against all hotel owners present in the country. But there was another thing that was still bothering John. That was the fact that he didn't even know who the real owner of the Glaze Hotel was. He had tried all means to investigate, but he ended up with nothing, not even the first name. All that he knew was that there was a lady who always went to the hotel. With the amount of respect that she received from the top echelons of the hotel, it was obvious that she held an important position in the hotel. But when he did his research, he found that she was not actually the real owner of the hotel. That implied that she might just be a caretaker. All that aside for now, John was contemplating on what to do. He knew that with the absence of the master chefs of the hotel, the business was going the wrong way. Ask all those that are still here to continue working as normal. Their salaries will be increased. As for those who want to resign, don't approve their resignation yet. Give them some time. John stated in a cold tone. His mind had already begun flashing with several ideas on how to deal with the current situation. And, he had already found the very ideal way of dealing with it. Since it seemed that it was not possible for the normal means to work, then it seemed that he had to depend on other means. The soaring eagle was his life. There was no way that he was going to allow it to go down. It didn't matter what means and methods he utilized, but the Soaring Eagle Hotel had to maintain its current position at worst. The first thing that John decided to do was to find ways that he could retain the chefs. There was no way that he was going to allow them to go away, in a period where there were no other people that could replace them. For that reason, he decided to resort to all means possible to make sure that he succeeded, since there was no way that he could convince them with the benefits that he offered then he had to use other means to do so. During that night, he made several calls one after the other, and after that, he relaxed in his house for the night, waiting for a report the following day. He didn't believe that he was going to fail. But when the following day came, there was actually no response from the people that he had called previously, it was as if they had forgotten about the deal that they had made. Frowning, John took out his phone and made a call again, but, after a long period of calling, there was no response at all. This made him feel that there was something strange. Could it be that they have decided to give up on the mission? John couldn't help but question himself as he sat on his sofa in his mansion. He had already spent a lot of money during the previous night, and yet, the people that he trusted to complete the mission had actually abandoned it? He had actually hired a few thugs to go over to the homes of the chefs. He wanted to give them a warning. In this way, they were going to change their decisions about leaving the hotel. But surprisingly, no good news arrived. And at the same time, John had already begun feeling uneasy. He was wondered what other method to use. Shaking his head, he decided to go to the hotel, and continued thinking about other things while there. But when he got there, he was completely stunned. The reason behind this was the fact that, he received yet another report. There were a lot of people in the hotel that had actually submitted resignation letters. And, they gave the very same reason as the master chefs. John was stunned on the spot. He couldn't believe that as he was trying to salvage one point, then things were getting worse on the other side. Frustrated, John finally decided to take a drastic move. This time, he wasn't going to be polite at all. Since he didn't believe the crooks that he had sent previously, this time, he decided to be a little professional. And of course, the target this time wasn't the many people that had offered their resignation letters. Instead, it was their target, where they wanted to head to after they had resigned. That's right. He had decided to go over and deal with the owner of the Glaze Hotel. Even though he did not know about the owner, that didn't mean that he didn't know about the caretaker. Using the caretaker, he was sure that he could easily get information about the owner. Comma. It was a night of the 15th of September 2026. At this moment, inside his villa in Serenity Residential Area, Jack was seated in the living room. Accompanying him were three ladies, Celine, Denali, and finally Samantha. Celine would normally spend her night inside this villa some of the times. As for Denali, she was here because Jack had asked for her to be here. Samantha on the other hand was here because of Celine. Because she was Celine's personal bodyguard, she had to follow her everywhere. Jack had already made plans about how to deal with John. For that reason, he was currently expecting some guests to visit them. As for how they were going to arrive in the Serenity residential area that was supposedly well guarded, that was something that could be easily solved by professionals. Creek. Just then, the door to the living room was opened. Even though it was locked previously, it was still opened. The three people in the living room were not surprised by that. They looked towards the door and they saw that. A group of ten men came in. Each and every one of them was wearing black clothes, 
covering their faces as well. As they walked into the living room, they radiated with a bloodthirsty aura. It was clear that they had already committed several deaths. He he he, look at what we have here. It seems that the boss was right. She's here, and there are other three people here as well. The man who was in the lead laughed as he looked at the four people that were seated in the living room. Even though he found it strange that these four people were actually looking at them calmly, he didn't think too much about it. They had already made enough preparations to make sure that, when they came over, there was nobody who was going to disturb them. E.H., why are you not asking us why we came over uninvited? After laughing for a while, the man in the lead of the gang couldn't help but ask Jack and the others. After all, this was completely against the plot. Since they had already done this several times, they were expecting that both Jack and the three ladies were supposed to ask why they had come over. Since you know that you are uninvited, why don't you leave? Jack asked nonchalantly, I think you should take a look at. E.H. The man who was in the lead was taken aback by Jack's question. Now, he was wondering how it came to be that Jack didn't seem afraid at all. But after thinking about it for a while, he smiled behind the clothing that concealed his appearance. He thought of something, that Jack was only pretending to be calm simply because he was in the presence of three beautiful ladies. Hey, even he himself believed that he could have done that in case he was in Jack's position. Alright then, men, beat him up. Waving his hand towards the men that were standing behind him, he instructed them as he moved to the side to watch the show. Yes boss. The nine men had their eyes shining with excitement. It seemed that they had developed a peculiar character. Without thinking about the issue of being fair, they all charged towards Jack. Jack on the other hand didn't make a move, instead, he simply said in a nonchalant voice, make sure that you don't kill them. Just break a few of their bones. That should be enough to teach them. The moment that his voice fell, Samantha got to her feet, and with an incredible speed, she suddenly appeared in front of the group that was just about to arrive in front of Jack. Bang. Boom. Thud. Crack. With a single move for each person, they were blown backwards with either a broken hand or leg or ribs. Samantha was quite polite this time. Otherwise, had it not been for the fact that Jack had asked her not to kill them, she would have definitely killed them with a single blow. The man who seemed in charge of the group was just about to begin criticizing Jack about talking big, was suddenly petrified. He had never expected the scene that he saw. Just a moment ago, his men were charging towards Jack, ready to deal with him. But, in the next moment, they were all sent flying. And, their screams of agony made him feel a chill in his heart. His breathing immediately staggered. He swallowed hard. He had never expected that the mission that had been given to him, the one that he considered simple, was actually an iron plate. At that moment, he had already begun considering getting away from here. He didn't see the way that the lady handled his men. And since that was the case, then it was obvious that he did not have the capabilities to deal with her. I surely will have to get back at John this time. How comes he sent me to deal with something like this? Does he want me to die? The man thought to himself in anger. Okay then. Why don't you invite the one that sent you over? I'm sure that he is around somewhere. Jack's voice reached his ears again. The man was flabbergasted. He couldn't believe that Jack actually knew that John had come over. Previously, they had planned to come and deal with Denali so that she could reveal who the real owner of the Glaze Hotel was. After getting information about the real owner, they were planning to go after him. And it was also going to be at that moment when John was supposed to appear. And as for how they knew that Denali was here, they had of course been stalking her. They had followed her all the way, making sure to know where she was going to be for the night. If the place was not considered good for the work that they were supposed to do, then they would have to target her another time. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He is the one that sent me here. So for that reason, he has to deal with it by himself. I no longer care about the code of work again, the man thought to himself. He he he, I will inform him to come over right now. He looked at Jack, before gazing at Samantha anxiously. He had never expected to meet a person who was inexplicably strong, and she was actually a lady. This was a rare thing to see. He hurriedly took out his phone, and contacted John. They had left him somewhere outside, so that he could be informed when everything was ready. When John received a call, he was surprised. After all, it had only been less than five minutes since these people had gone inside. Could it be that they had already succeeded? Thinking of this, John immediately received the call. Yes, tell me. Boss, we have already gotten the real boss behind the Glaze Hotel. He just happened to be here. So, we don't need to go to look for him. The man replied from the other end. 
Even though it was true that John was ecstatic when he received that response, but there was something that he found strange. The voice of the other person was actually shaking. He was wondering what it was. But thinking about whom he had gone to look for, he thought that the voice might actually be shaking because of another reason. So without hesitation, he headed towards Jack's villa. When he entered the villa, he was surprised by the scene that he saw. Previously, when he heard the loud screaming coming from the villa, he had thought that it was the people present in the villa that were screaming. But, looking at the people who were wearing black clothing groaning on the ground, he couldn't tell what was going on anymore. After all, according to him, all these people were skilled enough to deal with the owner of the Glaze Hotel. Even if he had bodyguards with him, they should surely not be able to handle a group of ten skilled men. Could it be that he had been betrayed? He turned and looked at the man who had called him and informed him that they had completely dealt with the problem questioningly. As for the man, he simply shrugged his shoulders in response to that as he remained standing at a corner. You are here. I had been expecting you. Jack stated nonchalantly. He had already done his investigation about John. For that reason, he knew about his character, as well as all the shady things that he had done. For that reason, he had already prepared for this. And since usually, he was always staying in the dark, he believed that John would not be able to know about him. For that reason, he was bound to look for Denali because she was the one who mainly handled almost all the businesses concerning the Glaze Hotel, before he decided to take over. That was why he had organized a few people who belonged to the special team to go and take care of all those crooks that had been sent to the chef's homes. The people from the special team were not normal, as they had all taken the body strengthening solution. Just a single one of them was able to handle a group of almost 20 men. Of course, that was on the condition that their opponents didn't have guns. And when he received the report that what he had predicted was true, then he decided to make another move. That was, by using the people of the Glaze Hotel, he went ahead and offered lucrative contracts to all the staff members who were considered important to the Soaring Eagle Hotel. When he did that, he expected that with John's character, he was bound to go and search for the main source of the problem. And that was why he had organized for Denali to come to his villa tonight. As for security, how could it be easy for people to get into Serenity Residential Area? It was simply because Jack had organized for security to be a little loose, that these people managed to get in here without a lot of trouble. Even though John was supposed to detect that there was something wrong, he had thought that all of this was done since the people that he had hired this time were all too skilled. John looked at the young man who had spoken. Even as he sat there, John could detect that there was something special about the young man. He was not like the other young masters that only knew how to waste their time in clubs and casinos. So, you are the real owner of the Glaze Hotel? John asked. Even though all the people that he had sent over had been crippled and were laying on the ground, he didn't panic at all. He had handled several similar situations before. For that reason, he was sure that there was nothing that was going to be done to him. After all, besides some kind of warning, what else was there to be done to him? He was sure that Jack couldn't kill him. What do you think? Jack asked in return. He wasn't intending on entertaining John at all. John frowned when he heard that. But thinking about the situation that they were in, it was normal for Jack to be in a foul mood at the moment. After all, there was someone who had planned to attack him. All right then. The real reason as to why I came over today is to negotiate with you. I know that you have been trying to poach a lot of my staff members, but I hope that you don't continue with that. Otherwise, we are definitely going to be enemies. John said as he slowly walked towards a couch to sit down. But before he could sit down, he was surprised that he had been grabbed by a strong hand. When he looked at it, he was completely stunned when he saw that it belonged to a lady. Who told you that you were allowed to sit? You are not a visitor here, so better stand when talking to my boss, Samantha said in a cold voice. John, for some reason, felt chills down his spine. Even though he wanted to argue, he knew that he was currently disadvantaged. For that reason, he had to play by some of the rules that had been set by the other party. So, without much arguing, he continued standing. As for Samantha, she didn't move away from him. Instead, she continued staying close, ready to make a move in case John did anything suspicious. You are talking as if we are not already enemies. If I recall correctly, you are the one who made the first move. And when it comes to the issue of your staff members, don't you think that it is fair enough for me to get some of your staff members to work for me, in the place of those that were killed because of you? Jack questioned nonchalantly. John's heart skipped a beat when he heard that. He looked at Jack with widened eyes. 
he couldn't believe that Jack actually realized that he was the one who was behind the attack that was launched on the Glaze Hotel. But after a period of contemplation, he thought that this was just a fluke by Jack. Do you have any evidence to prove that? John asked. He tried to maintain his confidence, even though he was completely shaken at the moment. I think you should take a look at. Do you think I need proof to deal with you? To me, it doesn't matter whether I have any kind of proof or not. As long as you dare to do anything that goes against me, then you have to be ready for my retaliation, Jack replied. Before John could say anything, Jack continued. Let this become a warning to you. Don't dare to do anything else that is out of line. Since you wanted to compete with me, then that's just good. I'm going to make sure that that business of yours will go bankrupt. John was immediately infuriated when he heard Jack's words. This was the first time in a very long time that he had been actually threatened. And, the business that he really loved was actually going to be destroyed? That was just unacceptable. He stretched his hand as he pointed his finger towards Jack. He wanted to start threatening him, but before he could do anything, he suddenly felt a heavy force hitting him on the back. Before he could even react, he was already on the floor. He could feel immense pain on his back, as if his scapula was about to be dislocated from its location. With the heavy force that had thrown him forward, it wasn't just the back that was injured. Instead, even his nose had hit the ground, and blood had already started flowing out of it. You better behave here, Samantha stated coldly. Ever since she had taken a role as Celine's bodyguard, she had decided to do this with all her heart. After all, the reason as to why she was doing this was because of an existence that was at least at the same level as the vice leader of her organization. Even though she did not understand why strong people like Jack and Denali were actually engaging in some useless business to earn money, she didn't ask them. Everyone had their preferences. John's anger was already at the peak, and when he was hit, he was just about to explode. But, thinking about this immense pain that he was feeling, he decided against it. From the eyes that were looking at him, he was sure that Samantha would definitely attack him again in case he did anything else that provoked them. I will be giving you a warning this time. When you get back home, you better make sure that you stay at home and don't involve yourself in anything like hiring crooks to do dirty work for you, Jack started. You can simply sit back and enjoy the show as I destroy the soaring eagle, the one that has always been your pride. And, don't blame me for this. You can blame yourself for not only involving yourself in the hotel industry, but also for the fact that you attacked me first. For that reason, you will have to expect that I will attack you first as well. Nonsense, do you believe that I can? Before he could even finish what he was speaking, he suddenly felt that someone had kicked him. He rolled on the ground as he held his stomach tightly. The kick that he had received wasn't lenient at all. John struggled through the pain as he tried looking up to see who it was that had kicked him but, he was surprised to see that the person who had kicked him was not Samantha. Humph. They already said that you have to behave yourself here. What the heck are you yelping about? A man whose face was covered in black clothing stated coldly. John couldn't believe his eyes, and neither did the other four. After all, according to what Jack and the others believed, this person was actually hired by John to come over. But now he was the one who was attacking John. What are you doing? John couldn't help but ask through the pain. If eyes could kill, then the man standing in front of John would have already died a thousand times. Bang! Instead of replying to the question, the man kicked John again. Thereafter, as he watched as John rolled on the ground screaming in pain, he stated coldly, it seems that even your senses have failed. I wonder if this time you know that I was kicking you? If not, I can kick you again. Nobody in the room could believe what they were seeing. Wasn't this guy supposed to be on John's side? Then what the heck was he doing by kicking him? When the man saw that everyone was looking at him strangely, he chuckled nervously as he said, he he, it is all a misunderstanding. And all of this has been caused by this John. For that reason, I am going to make sure that he pays for the mistake that he did by sending us here. Jack simply shook his head and turned his attention back to John. Then he stated, I hope that we have come to an agreement. You stay back at home and make sure that you keep your eyes open. Oh, don't forget about your ears. I will make sure that you get to see and hear everything that happens to your hotel in the coming days. John was already trying to hold on from the pain that he was feeling, but, even currently, he really wanted to get to his feet and punch Jack. After all, what Jack was saying was no different from saying that, he was going to destroy all the efforts that he had been putting in for life. But, looking at the man that he had hired previously, looking at him as if he were waiting for a chance to kick him again, he decided to swallow the anger for now. He had to find a way to get out of here first before he could find other ways to deal with Jack. Alright, 
the two of you can get going now. And please, don't forget to take all those noisemakers from my house. Jack stated as he waved at them. John gritted his teeth as he got to his feet. Thereafter, he didn't even look at the man in black clothing and left the villa. His mind had already begun making plans on what to do. Stay in my house? Do you think you can make me do so? Once I'm out of here, I'm going to make sure that you pay for this. It doesn't matter what means I'm going to use, but you will have to suffer for the humiliation that you have given me. John talked to himself as he staggered out of there. You useless pieces of trash, better get back on your feet and get out of here and stop making noise. Don't you know where you are? Back inside the villa. The man in black began yelling at his subordinates that were still on the ground. Hey, you better stop shouting in here. Samantha reminded from the side. When he had a voice, the man in black felt a shiver. Immediately thereafter, he looked at his subordinates that were still on the ground, while some were already trying to get back on their feet. Even though they had been on the ground all this while, the reason as to why they had been continuously wailing was because they didn't want to get another beating. They had seen how dangerous this situation they were in was. Even though they were having an advantage in terms of numbers, they had actually been handled by a single person. For that reason, they wouldn't want to stay here any longer. But, since they had not been allowed to get out of here, they continued staying on the ground. And now that they had been told to get out of here, even though some of them had already gotten broken legs, they supported each other to get up. After a lot of struggling, the group finally left the villa. As for how they were going to get back home or if they were going to go to the hospital first, that was something that Jack wasn't concerned about. After they left the room, the group continued chatting. They didn't care about any threat that John could cause. But of course, that was just on the surface. Jack had already taken the precaution and sent one of the puppets that he had gotten from the system to go and keep an eye on John. The puppet's role was simple, it was to prevent John from ever getting out of his house. Even though Jack wasn't afraid of John, there was a fact that this guy had plenty of connections. And, if he used the connections that he possessed, even though Jack might not suffer directly, the same couldn't be said about those that were close to him. Even though there were some puppets that he had sent over to protect them from the dark, nobody could always predict when something would happen. During the following few days, Jack began making even more drastic moves. He wasn't ready to waste any more time. As a result, he began by doing some things like, selling things at an offer, which was at a low price as compared to any other hotels. Jack had decided to give a one-month period, where everything that was sold within the Glaze Hotel was going to be at the very low price that the other hotels could not try unless they wanted to suffer losses. I think you should take a look at. But of course, since these people had all engaged in the business industry, it was obvious that they were looking for profits. How could they bear to carry business if they were going to suffer heavy losses? That was unless if they were in charge of a charity foundation. Of course, in business, nobody was in good terms, especially when it came to those that were their competitors. But even so, Jack wasn't willing to make the life of these people who were in the hotel industry difficult. Since he was planning to make sure that he was going to be the monopoly in the hotel industry, then he had to do everything that he could to manage it. But, in return, he offered to purchase the other hotels at a price that was 50% more than the market price. Of course, some hotel owners saw that they were going to go bankrupt in case they continued competing with the Glaze Hotel. For that reason, they agreed to sell their hotels. But of course, there were those that were not willing. And, to deal with them, that was the reason as to why Jack had resorted to the strategy of selling all the meals that were present in his hotel at a very low price. Additionally, with his professional chef skills, he had obtained several recipes. With all these, various new types of meals were introduced in his hotel. And, to make sure that the recipes were not leaked, he ensured to monitor all those that participated in the cooking of the new meals. Of course, there was a special selection of people that had been chosen by Jack. All of these had undergone Denali's inspection as well. They signed a contract of confidentiality. As for the price of revealing the secret, that was, of course, 10 years of imprisonment. Jack was not in any need of the world that was possessed by these people. Instead, he made sure that they thought about the situation very well. After all, to trade for a recipe for 10 years of their freedom being taken away, that was definitely not worth it. Of course, apart from that, all the other services provided by the Glaze Hotel had also had a drastic drop in the charges fees. During this special month, Jack had decided that everything else was going to be priced at a 50% discount. As for a matter of losses, that was certainly something that did not apply to him. With the system, even if he got a single dollar, that was the same as if he had gotten $100.
So, the only thing that could be considered to be affecting him will be that, he was receiving reduced profit, but that was it. With the changes that Jack made, there was an influx of customers that appeared in the hotel, and for that reason, Jack went ahead and opened even more branches. By spending a lot of money, he was able to complete all these easily. After all, he could hire many people to work for him in case of renovation and so on. The Glaze Hotel soon became a hot topic, both on the internet and idle chatting on the streets. That was because, the meals that were sold in the Glaze Hotel could be afforded by people from different social classes. Additionally, with the prices of things hitting the lowest limit possible, it was obvious that most people wanted to take the chance to save money. And on their first trip, they would test how good the meals that were from the Glaze Hotel were. In other words, Jack had decided to use one month to attract customers, and find other means of retaining them. By ensuring that they believed that the meals at the Glaze Hotel were the best, he believed that they would always be back even if the prices were back to normal. Of course, normal to Jack was always a price that could be considered to be at the market price. With the actions taken by the Glaze Hotel, there were many people who began speculating that it wouldn't be long before the Glaze Hotel fell. This was of course for those that were owners of hotels and had refused to sell their hotels to Jack. They sneered as they thought that Jack was impulsive. He imagined that it was simple to throw them out of the market simply because he sold things at a low price. As for the matter of dealing with the government about the matter of price control, that was of course something that could be dealt with during the following month. As for now, this was something that could be considered as an offer from him. Where are you going? I'm going to get free food. Free food? Are you an idiot? How can there be free food in an economy like this? You haven't heard? The Glaze Hotel is offering free food? I guess there's something wrong with your brain. How can such a big hotel offer free food? That is something that happened last week. The prices of all food that is sold by the Glaze Hotel have declined by 50%. Isn't that not different from them offering us food for free? Are you serious? Can something like that really happen? Hee <laughs> hee, it appears that you have been living in the mountains recently. The main topic this time is that the Glaze Hotel has given an offer for this whole month. They are going to sell all the food and offer all the services at a 50% discounted price. Is the owner of Glaze Hotel an idiot? Won't his business go bankrupt if he does something like that? That is no different from deciding to do business at a loss. What does that have to do with me? Since there is a chance for me to get cheap meals, then I'm of course, going to seize this opportunity. The other hotels are definitely going to suffer during this one month. They are no longer going to have any customers coming to their hotels. What do you know? There are some that will have to go to those hotels even if they don't want to. After all, how can they not ensure that the business that they own continues to run if even they themselves cannot be the customers? You all cannot see this. All of this is just a plan that has been orchestrated by the Glaze Hotel. They are trying to find all means to dominate the whole hotel industry. Why do you care? Just go and eat. Forget about the competition between the hotels, as you don't own one of them. Have you ever tested the food that is cooked in the Glaze Hotel? I am telling you, there are no any other hotels that can cook delicious food apart from the Glaze Hotel. That's right. I don't know if they always add sugar into everything that they cook. Yes, you are right. Even though the food that I ate last time was the same one that I always eat for lunch, it was so delicious that I wanted to order another one. Discussions both on the internet and on the streets were all about the Glaze Hotel. After all, the move that Jack had made this time wasn't small at all. Since Jack had the system, he had decided to utilize it to make sure that he fulfilled the five conditions as soon as possible. For that reason, even if he carried out the business that was believed to be at a loss, that was what others believed. With the ability of the system to multiply his income by a hundred times, there was definitely no loss that he was going to suffer. And during this past week, it was not just a matter of selling goods and services at a lower price, but instead, it also involved his plans of dealing with the Soaring Eagle Hotel. Unlike the other hotels that he wanted to defeat in the normal way, since the owner of the Soaring Eagle Hotel had decided to play dirty with him, then Jack was, of course, going to play that with him as well. For that reason, during the past week, he had completely utilized all means possible to make sure that the Soaring Eagle Hotel fell. It was not just a matter of poaching the staff members of the Soaring Eagle Hotel. Instead, Jack had also resorted to methods such as blocking the ingredients from reaching the Soaring Eagle Hotel. Something like that was, of course, carried out easily by him. This was the period that he was using the over 100 people that he had received back at Inchoate City. That's right. This was the group that was part of the Jerk Brothers gang. 
Ever since that day, these people had been working as security guards for the grocery department that was located in the city. But with the security coming from GVSL, Jack had decided to give them another role, and that was to hijack all the products that belonged to the Soaring Eagle Hotel. And all of this was done in secrecy, and that, besides John, there was nobody else that knew about this. As for the group of 10 that had come to attack him previously, that group had already been taken into custody by the police. After all, they had committed several crimes and were already on the wanted list of the police. I think you should take a look at. Another thing that Jack had done during this one week period was to invite the top chefs of the Glaze Hotel and give them some tips on how to elevate their cooking skills. Even though he did not pass down all the recipes that he owned, he still had other ways that could improve the normal food that was always cooked in the Glaze Hotel. That was one of his plans of trying to retain the customers that he was going to get during this one month. And apart from that, it was to make sure that the services that were provided by the Glaze Hotel were all top notch. For that reason, all the staff members of the Glaze Hotel had already begun undergoing training. But of course, this was a matter of taking shifts. During the first month, a certain number of staff members of the hotel were going to be trained. During the following month, another group was going to be trained as well. As for the matter of his competitors using their connections to do the same thing as he was doing to the Soaring Eagle Hotel, that was definitely something that was impossible to happen. The reason behind this was because, Jack had found another method to use the system well. In case there was a company that was supposed to provide a certain ingredient, and it had decided to end the cooperation with the Glaze Hotel, Jack would simply buy another company that provided the same types of goods. Thereafter, he would look for a person to whom he could sell the business to, for that reason, he was going to receive the first income reward. And what made Jack excited was the fact that, the first income reward was undoubtedly something that he needed urgently. For that reason, he will always be given something like, a procedure to make a certain ingredient, the shares of a certain company that belonged to the top, or, a source of the ingredient. For that reason, during the past one week, Jack had spent a lot of money, but still, he had also earned a lot. After all, buying and selling businesses was also considered a business. So, the income that he received after selling a business was also multiplied by 100 times. With this, Jack immediately blocked all the means that his competitors were trying to use to block the Glaze Hotel from dominating the market. Trying to block my means of getting a certain ingredient, dream on. I own the company that produces a certain ingredient. Just like that, all the methods that were utilized by the other hotels were rendered useless. The owners of the hotels could only wail as they saw as their businesses dropped day by day. The thing that paint them the most was the fact that, there were some times that they themselves found themselves in the Glaze Hotel dining. This was due to the fact that, their families had organized for them to visit the Glaze Hotel and taste their food. So, during the meals, they could only eat as they cried in their hearts. After all, they could tell that the competition that they were facing was something that they could not handle easily. And of course, there were several situations where there were owners that had tried using dark tricks. An example of that was by trying to kill Denali. But of course, all their efforts went down the drain. This was because, all their actions were being monitored by Jack. There was no way that he was going to drop his guard against the enemies that he was facing, unless he was sure that he had completely dismantled them. Of course, he wasn't the one that was keeping a tab on all of them. Instead, using his computer mastery, he had managed to create a program that could be used to monitor them. As long as these people contacted others and said something that involved him or the hotel, Jack would be immediately alerted. But of course, there was also a special team of four puppets that was in charge of monitoring the information. Even though these puppets did not have their emotions, they were just like Samantha. In other words, all the abilities and thinking capacity that Samantha possessed was what these puppets possessed as well. As for the matter of trying to get even stronger, Jack had not given up on it, instead, he had already begun another round of purchasing fighting clubs, or investing in fighting competitions. All of these were done so that he could get another wave of first income rewards from the system. Even though he was having two levels that he had set aside, that didn't mean that he had already given up on the matter of getting stronger. He had gotten information from Samantha that, there were people who were stronger than him back at the strongholds. For that reason, he had decided to try to get stronger. As for the matter of the anti-laser armor, that was something that could only be dealt with when he went to the stronghold. This was because, Samantha had informed him that if she went back there, then, she would not be allowed to come back. After all, she had simply sneaked out of the organization without permission, 
and if she went back, without any important reason or evidence, then she was bound to be punished. Since he had other means that he could utilize during an emergency, Jack decided to deal with the matter of getting stronger himself first. After he upgraded the system authority to the second level, that would be the time that he would be paying a visit to the strongholds. Currently, as Jack was getting excited by seeing that his goal was about to be achieved, there was someone who was crying blood. This was none other than John. John had tried several times to sneak out of his house, but every moment that he dared to do that, he always found that there was a lady in front of him. It was as if that lady was anticipating every of his movements. But for the matter of trying to communicate with the police, to come over and help him, that thought never crossed his mind at all. The main reason behind that was because, in his home, there are a lot of things that could point out towards the crimes that he had committed. Additionally, even if John decided to do that, his communications had been cut off by Jack. Now, other than using a letter to communicate in the old way, there was no way that John could contact anybody. John was still a bachelor despite being old. The plan that he was having in mind was that, after the Soaring Eagle Hotel became the biggest hotel in the country, that was the time that he was going to think about marriage. But before that, he was going to only focus on the hotel. But, who would have known that during this time, there was going to be someone who was going to crush his dreams. And not only that, even the plants that he had arranged for the future were completely ruined. Seated in his living room, John scratched his hair as he tried to think of the means that he was going to use. There was no way that he was going to fight the lady outside, considering that she was far stronger than he was. Well, experience is the best teacher. Although John could not pass information to the outside world, the same couldn't be said about information in the outside world reaching him. So, as he watched the television, he had managed to see several times how the Glaze Hotel was operating. And with that, he could already tell that his hotel was greatly suffering. Additionally, with the news that there was a group of people that were hijacking goods that belonged to the Soaring Eagle Hotel, John wanted to burst in anger. According to the news, the police had done their investigation, but there was nothing that they could find, even though there were some people that said that this was related to the Glaze Hotel, without any strong evidence, there was no way that they were going to condemn the Glaze Hotel. Additionally, what was the reason for the Glaze Hotel to do something like that? when they were actually offering their services at a 50% discount? Or, could it be that these goods that had been hijacked were the ones that were utilized in the Glaze Hotel? Investigation had been carried out but, they found that all the ingredients and other things that were utilized in the Glaze Hotel were legitimate. For that reason, there was no way that they were going to sue the Glaze Hotel. Of course, John didn't buy any of that. After all, he knew that the reason as to why the goods that belonged to his Soaring Eagle Hotel were being hijacked was simply because of the Glaze Hotel. The most infuriating thing about this was the fact that, even though John knew the truth, there was nothing that he could do. He could only stay in his home, as he watched as the business that he had built for years was being destroyed. Of course, John wasn't the only person that was suffering. The other hotels had also experienced a very big drop in their business. Only those people that were considered very loyal to their hotels were the ones that were still dining there. But as time went by, these people had already begun changing their minds. After all, from the rumors that were flying around, it was said that the food that could be found in the Glaze Hotel was the very best. Since that was the case, and there was a limited offer of one month period where, all the meals that were present in the Glaze Hotel were sold at a 50% discount. All these hotel owners were the ones that had refused to sell their hotels before. As for those who had already sold them, they had already tried looking for other areas that they could invest. Of course, there were some of them that had tried investing into the Glaze Hotel. They could see that there was a future for the Glaze Hotel. Unlike those that were still waiting for the Glaze Hotel to go bankrupt, these people knew that that was completely impossible. The reason behind this was the fact that, their hotels had been purchased at a price 50% higher than the market price. This was enough to tell them that the owner of the Glaze Hotel was not a person whom money was a problem to. But of course, all of their efforts were bound to be rejected. After all, the Glaze Hotel was a business owned by a single person. And, Jack wasn't ready to start giving away shares of the hotel. I think you should take a look at. After all, not only was this going to influence his decision making, but, there are going to be a lot of people that were going to benefit without doing anything. Even though he did not mind. The issue of having others benefit from his efforts was definitely something that he didn't like, unless they were familiar with each other. Moreover, for him to be able to dominate the hotel industry, he had to possess 100% shares of the hotel that was dominating the market. By selling the shares, 
then he was of course going to create trouble for himself in fulfilling the condition. Inside the conference room that was located in one of the big hotels of the country, there was a gathering going on. Stepping into this palatial space, one would be immediately struck by its grandeur and sophistication. This conference room had been meticulously designed to impress even the most discerning individuals, leaving a lasting impression on all who enter. At the center of this magnificent room sat a colossal round table, expertly crafted from the finest materials. The table's surface boasted a seamless and flawless finish, reflecting the ambient light and radiating an aura of opulence. Constructed from rare, rich wood or gleaming marble, it exuded timeless elegance and served as a symbol of refined taste. Encircling the table were a series of plush, exquisitely designed chairs. Each seat was carefully upholstered in sumptuous, hand-stitched leather, providing superior comfort and a sense of regality. Adorning the walls were magnificent works of art, carefully selected to enhance the room's ambience and inspire creativity during discussions. These priceless masterpieces served as conversation starters, adding a touch of cultural sophistication and stimulating intellectual exchange. The room was bathed in soft, warm lighting, emanating a welcoming and serene atmosphere. Illuminated by discreetly placed LED fixtures, the lighting could be easily adjusted to suit the tone and purpose of the meeting. Whether it be a tranquil ambiance for reflective brainstorming or a more vibrant environment for lively debate, this conference room effortlessly adapted to the needs of its occupants. Incorporating the latest technological advancements, the room featured state-of-the-art audiovisual equipment, seamlessly integrated into the room's design. A large, high-definition display adorned one of the walls, providing crystal-clear visibility to all participants. Seated on the chairs around the table, was a group of eight people. Each one of them had a solemn expression on their faces, completely ignoring how luxurious the area that they were in was. This is just too much. It has only been one week but the losses that I have suffered are uncountable. We have to do something about the Glaze Hotel. A man with a bald head spoke, anger clear in his eyes. Why are you shouting? It is not as if you are the only person who has suffered big losses during the past week. We have all suffered the same consequences. So, it is better if you calm down and start thinking of ways that can help us to deal with the situation. A mature lady wearing a red dress spoke. The bald-headed guy simply snorted and turned his attention to the phone that he was holding in his hand, but, he was simply scrolling left and right, doing nothing important on the phone. You all know the problem that we are encountering this time. The problem is that we don't know who the real owner of the Glaze Hotel is. And another problem is, for him to be able to do what the Glaze Hotel has been doing, that means that the person that we are facing this time is not easily dealt with. A man wearing a black suit spoke. We already know that. We have already done a lot of investigations but we have gotten nothing out of it, a man in casual clothing replied. All the methods that we have utilized so far have been useless, it doesn't matter what we try doing, no matter if it is blocking the ingredients or other necessities of the hotel, we always find companies that don't cooperate with us at all. The lady wearing a red dress spoke again. And, to make matters worse, they are all big companies that we cannot simply destroy them on a whim. If we act anyhow, we are definitely going to make enemies that we cannot be able to tackle, she continued. The losses that we have already suffered at this moment cannot be easily recovered even if the one-month period that the Glaze Hotel is offering the 50% discount ends. A man with a sharp nose shook his head as he said. I only have a single suggestion this time. Since we cannot beat the Glaze Hotel unless we lose a lot, then I suggest that we sell our hotels to him. It is already clear that the owner of the Glaze Hotel wants to dominate the entire hotel industry. A lady with thick makeup stated. The moments that she said these words, silence dominated at the entire conference room. Each and every person present began thinking about the matter.